Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q3 FY24 earnings conference call of Gland Pharma Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ankit Gupta. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Sagar. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we welcome you to Gland Pharma Earnings Conference Call for Q3 FY24. My name is Ankit and I drive the investment m and and corporate strategy for Gland. Uh, I have Mr. Srinivas Sadhu, MD and CEO, and Mr. Ravi Mitra, CFO, uh, to discuss business performance and financial highlights for the quarter. We will begin this call with the business highlights by Mr. Sadhu, followed by a financial overview by Mr. Ravi. Before we proceed, please note the safe harbor statement that we have on the press release. Some of the statements that we make today will be forward-looking and will be based on the current estimates that management has. These statements must be viewed in conjunction with the risks that are involved in our business. The call is being recorded and the playback will be made available on our website shortly. We will also have the transcript in a week's time. Uh, I will now hand over the call to Mr. Sadhu for his opening remarks. Uh, thank you. Over to you, Mr. Sadhu. Thank you, Ankit. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Glance Q3 FY24 earnings call. I extend my well wishes for your family's health, happiness, and prosperity. May all of you witness a continued upturn in 2024, and we look forward to a prosperous year ahead. As in previous quarters, we intend to provide a comprehensive update on the standalone performance of Gland and the group's overall performance, including financial data from Synexi, the CDMO we acquired in Europe. We have maintained our momentum with robust revenue growth in the third quarter. We reported revenues of uh, Rs. 15,452 million for Q3 FI24, an increase of 13% quarter on quarter and 65% year on year compared to Rs. 13,734 million in Q2 FI24 and Rs. 9,383 million in Q3 FI23. The quarter over quarter growth has been propelled by our consistent performance, increased volumes, shift in a stable pricing and environment, and the introduction of new products. Furthermore, we recorded the complete quarter sales of Synexi. The co market generated 77% of revenue, a year over year increase from 71% in Q3 FI23. The company's largest market, the United States, witnessed a 12% quarter over quarter and 41% year over year growth. The company introduced or reintroduced nine molecules in these markets during the quarter. We witnessed robust volume momentum for key new products, including levothyroxine, ropivacaine, ketamine, oxyatide, and zinc sulfate. The pricing for the products we shipped during the quarter remained relatively stable, and we saw increased demand for several of our previously launched products. The performance in the ex-US primary markets remained consistent, Despite the longer approval process, we continue to identify products from our U.S. basket that have the potential to enter these regions, specifically in Australia and Europe. The rest of the world markets contributed 18% of our revenue in Q3 FI24, compared to 21% in Q3 FI23. These markets reported a 7% quarter-on-quarter increase largely attributable to Senexi volumes. The Indian market contributed 5% for revenue in Q3 FI24, and experienced a 7% decrease compared to the corresponding period in the previous fiscal year. While building the other markets, we remain focused on strategically important products in India and will explore avenues for value creation. Our manufacturing sites remain operational with efficiencies and we are committed to delivering high quality products at scale with competitive costs and all time compliance. We are conducting a facility upgrade activity in one of the liabilization lines at our Dindigan flagship facility in Hyderabad. Consequently, this liberalization land will remain non-operation for two weeks in March. There will be a temporary supply disruption from this land. However, all the facilities, other lines will remain operational. On the R&D front, total R&D expenses for Q3 FI24 were Rs. 530 million or 5% of operating revenue. We filed eight, uh, sorry, 10 NDAs during the quarter and received approval for three NDAs. 
As of December 31, 2023, Gland and its partners filed 346 ADS in the United States, of which 279 were approved and 67 pending approval. The company has 1659 product registrations worldwide. Discussing consolidated profitability and EBITDA margin, he reported an absolute EBITDA of Rs. 3,557 million and a net profit of Rs. 1,019 million for Q3 FY24. This quarter, EBITDA margins remained similar at 23%, primarily impacted by negative EBITDA margins at Senexi. For Q3 FY24, Senexi reported a revenue of Rs. 4,439 million with a gross contribution of 75% and a negative EBITDA of Rs. 170 million. However, the business achieved EBITDA break-even on an adjusted basis, excluding some one-time expenses. An organizational restructuring exercise and changes to the pension provisions resulted in an effect of around 2 million euros in the quarter, ended December 23. In addition, lower productivity led to reduced overhead absorption in inventory resulting in lower EBITDA during the quarter. Our post merger integration review is now mostly complete and we identified areas where Senexi would need investments, improvements and leadership recruitment across critical functions. Regarding the company's business, we have reasonable confidence in Senexi's current clientele and the partner's commitment for the long term. As for expansion, we have a solid order book of new programs that have been signed and are currently in various stages of tech transfer and approval. With these programs, we anticipate a medium-term incremental increase of 30 to 40 million euros on our existing annual revenue base. Despite our investment in capabilities to support this expansion, we continue to face issues with operational performance and the timely execution of the existing orders. These operational issues are causing delays in supplies and augmenting our backlog of orders. This issue has mostly affected our quarterly performance, leading us to rebalance our capacity and shift certain products to different lines which will take time due to regulatory processes. In addition, we'll invest in building new high-speed lines to replace the existing ones, automating processes to make them more efficient, and ensuring compliance. Senexi plans to real realize its acquisition thesis over the next 12 to 15 months. We are confident that we'll end the fiscal year 24 on a positive note and continue to be excited about the opportunities ahead of us. I now hand over the call to our CFO, Mr. Ravi Mitra, who will share more insights about our financial performance for the quarter. Thank you very much. Over to you, Mr. Nitra. Thank you, Mr. Sadhu. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for attending our third quarter earnings call. Let me begin by sharing the financial performance of the third quarter and nine months of the financial year 2023-24. Revenue from operations increased by 65% here to rupees 15,452 million in Q3 FI24. The consolidation of the Synexi business acquired during the current financial year contributed significantly to the year-over-year -year expansion of revenue, increasing our footprint in Europe. The revenue from operations for the nine months of FI24 stood at Rs. 41,273 million, a year-on-year -year increase of 45%. Our base business, which is XNXE, also grew 17% in this quarter over previous year and 9% over Q2 FI24, driven by our increased performance in U.S. market. Other income for the third quarter of FI24 was Rs. Uh, 374 million, which largely includes interest on fixed deposit and is lower than Q3 FI23, which was 615 million on account of lower interest income and forex gain. For nine months FI24, the other income was Rs. 1,281 million, of which interest on fixed deposit was Rs. 1,063 million, and foreign exchange gains on operations were Rs. 154 million. The gross margin for Q3 FI24 was 61%, an improvement from 54% in Q3 FI23 due to Senex's high gross margin. On the positive side, our base business has also witnessed an improvement in the gross margin over the last year due to product mix. We have reported an EBITDA of Rs. 3,557 million in Q3 FI 24 compared to Rs. 2,896 million 
an increase of 23% compared to last financial year. The EBITDA margin of Q3 FI24 stood at 23% compared to 31% for the previous financial year. For the base business, XNXE, we have reported the EBITDA margin for Q3 FI24 at 34%, up from 31% in the same period of the previous year. We, however, reported a negative 170 million of EBITDA at XNXE, primarily due to certain one-time effects. On our base business operation, we managed to rationalize the power cost and manpower expenses during this quarter as compared to the same period of previous year. The EBITDA for the nine months ended December 2023 was Rs. 9,744 million compared to Rs. 8,563 million for the same period last year, an increase of 14%. We have reported the EBITDA margin for nine months in FI24 at 24% for the group and 33% for the base business. During the quarter, we finalized the purchase price allocation exercise of Senexi acquisition. The additional impact on depreciation and amortization on account of fair valuation of net assets for purchase price allocation amounted to Rs. 294 million and Rs. 374 7 million for the quarter and 9 months ended December 31st, 2023, respectively. On a go-forward basis, Senexi would report a depreciation and amortization of approximately Rs. 90 to 140 million per quarter on account of purchase price allocation. Our net profit for the third quarter decreased by 17%, stood at 1,919 million compared to Q3 FI23 and decreased by 1% to the previous quarter of the current financial year due to the reasons mentioned earlier. During the quarter, we recorded a PAT margin of 12%. During the nine months of the current financial year, our PAT was 5,800 million at a 14% margin. The total R&D expenses for the third quarter were Rs. 530 million compared to Rs. 512 million for the same period of the previous financial year and stood at 5% of the revenue from operations on an X and XE basis. The total R&D expense for the nine months were Rs. 1,337 million, which is 4% of our revenue. On a standalone basis, our effective tax rate was 25.5% in the third quarter and 25.8% for the nine months of the current financial year. As of December 31st, 2023, on a group level, we had a total of Rs. 24,795 million in cash and equivalents, an increase of Rs. 2,168 million over the previous quarter of September 30th, 2023. Due to loans on Senexi's books to the tune of Rs. 4,058 million as of December 31st, our net cash position was Rs. 20,704 million. Cash flow from operations during the nine months was Rs. 6,228 million. Working capital was reduced and stood at Rs. 22,805 million as of December 31st, 2023, as compared to Rs. 24,010 million as of March 31st, 2023, due to decrease in inventory levels. The average cash conversion cycle improved and stood at 182 days for the nine months ending December 2023 as compared to 240 days of the same period last financial year. CapEx spent during the quarter is Rs. 810 million. At Senexi, the plan of new high-speed ampule line and new equipments for enhancing our capacity and operational efficiencies is progressing well. With this, I would request that the moderator open the lines for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles.
The first question is from the line of Shyam Srinivasan from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening and thank you for taking my question. Uh, just the first one is on the U.S. market and the sustainability uh, of the revenue run rate, right? So we have done about $8.2 billion um, uh, for the quarter. Um, so I just want to understand what's driving that. I think your commentary talks about stable pricing environment. So is it largely driven by volumes and uh, uh, are we uh, are we in a position to sustain this uh, quarterly run rate? Yeah, the, uh, the market looks actually positive. Uh, the growth came from uh, volumes uh, by 8% and another 3% came from the uh, new launches. Uh, but also uh, Inox uh, came back and we are seeing an uh, uptick of volumes. Uh, we are looking at a forecast of 19 million. I think last call we said about 16, 17 million. I think we are seeing a higher uh, demand from that market. Uh, but like I said, you know, we are a little aggressive on the pricing. Also, the material price have gone down. So we have uh, uh, revised the pricing and uh, to go after the business. And also the several molecules where uh, you might have seen uh, oncology products got launched, uh, which are higher value. So the momentum uh, looks positive in terms of the U.S. business. So, Mr. Sir, are you uh, any kind of a guidance for how we should look at Q4 uh, at this point of time, or do we do we think we can sustain this for about eight billion odd number? Uh, the growth, steady growth will, uh, you know, at least in the near term, we are seeing steady growth will continue. And you broke down the 15 percent QoQ growth for the quarter as eight of volume and three of new products, right? So that still leaves another three percentage points, which would be the anoxaparin. Is that how you're breaking it down? Uh, that's, uh, you know, we also have uh, the other income, right, milestone and the profit share portion of it. If you could quantify that, please, sorry. Yeah. I think the rest, uh, the 3% comes from those two components. I don't have a break of these two, but that comes from that. Okay, understood. Just the second question is on Senexi, and I'll pause after that, uh, is on... Um, you know, we have looked at this asset for close to, um, you know, at least coming to a, a year now. And, you know, there is some restructuring that we have done. You're talking about additional investments. Uh, when we made this acquisition last year, um, it was a 10% EBITDA margin business. Uh, this quarter, even if I add back the 2 million euros, that's an EBITDA break-even. So what's the long-term outlook here? Um, you know, you made the changes to... Uh, the purchase price as well. So if you can, uh, from a consideration perspective, obviously, but just want to understand the long-term outlook for Senexi. Do we have the ability to take it back up to historical margins or something has changed there cyclically? Thank you. No, the uh, the, the thesis is still uh, uh, holds good. It's just the timing. Uh, if you see, uh, one is, of course, the one-off expenses we incur in the quarter, which will make it break even. And uh, uh, we also have a lower productivity. Uh, that's where we're talking about operational efficiency would increase. Low productivity uh, impacted the uh, end of the quarter inventory. Uh, it's a 75% uh, margin uh, asset. Uh, any inventory, lowering of inventory actually is impacting uh, big time. So the downflow is impacted around uh, 3 million uh, because of the lower inventory compared to the previous quarter inventory. Yeah, sorry, what was your question on the purchase price? Yeah. No, no, I said uh, we have made an adjustment. We have got the right numbers, right? I believe so far we have made an estimate. This is the right number for, uh, because the DNA has changed, uh, right? So I just want to understand from a long-term outlook, um, where are the margins likely to settle for Senex? So uh, one is, of course, the current business, you know, at least uh, we're looking at 10%, uh, like I said last time, you know, we're still looking at 10% uh, in the midterm. And then uh, we have uh, projects which are getting tech transferred that will add revenue of 30, 40 million. Most of it should, uh, you know, um, trickle down to the beta level uh, because we see a break-even point for this asset around 190 million, 190, 200 million. Anything above that should, uh, you know, uh, positively impact the uh, profitability.
All right. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neha Manpuria from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so again, on the Synexy piece, uh, if you look at the revenue rate, we're obviously tracking uh, much sorry better to than the... Uh, Ms. Manpuria, your line was uh, cracking in between. So could you please repeat the question once again? Is it better? Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, so I said on the next fee, you know, if I were to look at the revenue run rate, obviously it's doing much better than, you know, even part of the quarter that was there. Uh, gross margins also aren't that different. I, I didn't quite understand the lower productivity comment because their revenue does not seem to be showing lower productivity or lower volumes. So, you know, even adjusted for one-off, uh, why did we just break even? I would have assumed that, you know, we would have gone back to the usual margins um, here. So what I, I didn't quite understand your comment. Okay, so, uh, so top line number, yes, you're right. It has uh, improved uh, in this quarter. But uh, the production has uh, not to the tune of what we had expected. So while there was inventory which was sold out, and this was uh, sufficient to our expectation, production was lower, which has led to uh, lower absorption of overheads in inventory. Mm. And there was a thing... Uh, uh, you know, one-offs like uh, related to employee and uh, management restructuring, which has impacted one time. So okay. that is the reason why uh, this is a bit uh, uh, 170 million negative this quarter. And uh, uh, Sadhguru, you also mentioned something about you know operational issues in executing order leading to you know delay in sort of realizing revenue. Um, so th does this mean the 30 to 50 million incremental revenue that you talked about uh, could come in much later? I mean, when should we start assuming this, you know, in incremental revenue flowing through? And what did you mean by operational issues? Is, is this the same thing that you're talking about, that there was lower production? Yeah, so the 30, 40 million, you know, you see only in the FI25, um, sorry, FI26 next year. Uh, what I'm saying, the oper operational efficiency is with the current, uh, you know, one of the facilities are, I would say, you know, capacity-wise, it's chock a block And uh, we're not able to uh, deliver because of the poor um, uh, OTIS, you know, the lines are old, and we want to change those lines. Unless we um, substitute with the fast line, it's very difficult to get to those numbers what we talked about. And for that, we need to sometime, you know, one, maybe next few months, we take a call of taking a shutdown and then implementing this because long term, this is what we want to do. That's why we said it's a near term pain, but uh, the business is very strong. Uh, you know, the order book is very strong and the transfer projects what they're handling are very strong. So it's just the timing and uh, uh, how to streamline the uh, operations is, uh, is a challenge in the near term uh, because any movement of products from one line to another requires some regulatory approvals. And uh, no, that's what we're doing now. You know, we're moving some products from one side to other, one line to another. And, you know, getting the approval to commercialize those will take some time. So, you know, there's a near term pain in that, that regard. Okay, got it. Uh, and my second question is, you know, on the ROW business in the standalone piece, that seems to be coming off quarter after quarter, uh, you know. Um, you know, is, is there some slowdown that we're seeing in particular market or is it inability to gain um, volume, what's going on in the ROW, and when should we start seeing that market go back into growth mode? Uh, there are some positives, actually, from, you will see from um, April quarter, we did uh, uh, one, um, again, uh, the, the, uh, the tender in Saudi for 15 products. Uh, the estimated uh, sales for that is around 50, 55 million per, year, per annum. Uh, the previous year, uh, Saudi, we were clocking around 25 million, 25 odd uh, million dollars sales, so that is almost 15 products we want tender for. So that's a good uptake. Then in South Africa, we uh, we got approvals of four products, we're launching three products. That will add about a few million dollars. So there are some policies coming off. And also, uh, other thing is the, the, the bid what we had, the Saudi entered in the, uh, the last quarter. So the tapering of sales happened. Uh, the current quarter also, there are uh, limited sales in Saudi, but uh, the, the next bid uh, which we have won, the supplies will start from uh, March, April. So again, the, the business uh, will go back uh, narrow W once you start supplying to that. So it's mostly the timing perspective, I would say. Understood. And one last question. The LIFO line shutdown, 
uh, what could have re- what kind of revenue impact can we see from the two week shutdown that you are talking about but if it it will not be substantial because it's happening in march and it's only uh, two weeks of flyo so it shouldn't be substantial but as just as uh, you know because we being our class and that we should inform so as a yeah. uh, the prudence have informed that good okay got it sir thank you so much thank you thank you a reminder to all the participants if you wish to ask questions you may press star and 1 on your touchstone phone The next question is from the line of Amay Chalke from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for giving me an opportunity. So I have a couple of questions. First is, uh, uh, we we are a cramps company, so uh, uh, that we have been saying that we will uh, as a source of the products we typically uh, uh, supply to multiple clients. But I have not seen a, a, a client addition happening in some of our these products so if if you can highlight on the same uh, uh, are there any major client additions on the top 10 product which could either uh, have already taken place over last one one and a half year and how it will pan out over next one year uh, there there are only certain limited clients who in license products right uh, and you know we are um, uh, sub, uh, supplying products to most of the top uh, injectable front end companies and uh, this part of a business where you know some of the clients if uh, they don't uh, meet the market share requirements it gets transferred to another customer if they really need of it uh, because most of them may not have already have this product so it's ongoing process we did onboard couple of uh, new uh, customers as well but again there are only so many uh, front end customers who can invest in this products sure so there is uh, another question related to this uh, there are there are a lot of shortages if you uh, see the us fda shortage list there are at least two three products oncology products we are already there in those products like six platins or a couple of platins which are there then there are two large products uh, from our top 10 list like heparin and catorolac so uh, are we have we already benefited from these products is it there in the uh, numbers us numbers or you expect going ahead there could be a volume ramp up which would happen in these products or is there any chance of client addition in these kind of products where there is a shortage where we have the capacity but the another competitor may not be having it so i mean to be product specific like ketolac you know it's always been under shortage so we've been having a larger market share for this product for for long time uh, for cystad and cavoplatin we launched uh, uh, two products ago and uh, we have for carbo at least we have 55% of market share and so we have a consistent supply for that so on an annual basis i think the sales have i would say it started from last two quarters so it will be increased on the uh, if you look at uh, an annual basis but it's we already start supplying and um, um, and i think uh, most of the shortages are going on at least for these products once we started once we have started supplying uh, two quarters ago so you see any benefits coming in because of shortages in the coming year or you think it is already in the numbers well it's always the right i mean if last 10 to 15 years if you see always there's some products which are always coming out uh, coming in the shortage list uh, because of regulatory issues so it, that's part of uh, the injectable uh, business and that's why so much importance and quality of sites is uh, important and we pay so much attention to sure the so last question on the cnxt uh, Uh, we acquired this asset all, also to the kind of technical capability it had. So, is there any synergy we can generate for the US business uh, from this unit? Yeah, there's several, especially the oncology treatment series. What they have, they're already working on um, um, some some one of the products. Uh, uh, our R&D team is trying to collaborate with that asset uh, where we didn't have earlier. So, yes, we are working with them, but uh, you know we have. Uh, other issues to resolve first before uh, putting more burden on that asset uh, so that streamlining happening in parallel some development is has started working with the clients as well in terms of business uh, the customer client, the clientele of senexi are in discussion with us to take more products from us for other markets as well thank you so much yeah thank you the next question is from the line of chintan shet 
from Giri Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Hope I am audible. Uh, couple of questions again on Senexi. If uh, uh, you elaborated that uh, inventory related, you know, um, uh, issue resulted into um, resulted into you know uh, losses over there, apart from the one off part. Uh, but if you look at the gross margin profile, uh, sequentially it has just uh, contracted uh, only 200 basis points from 77 to 75. Does that uh, actually translate into uh, such large underabsorption of uh, profits or underabsorption of cost? Yeah, so what happens is that uh, because it's a high margin uh, uh, product and uh, largely the uh, the, uh, the overheads which is uh, uh, expenses and salary and power etc is loaded. So that is uh, coming in the individual line item below gross margin, but not loaded on inventory. So that is what uh, has happened. Okay. And if the production would have been higher in line with what the sale has happened, and which will uh, the next few quarters it will come back. So then with the higher production, you have uh, more uh, overhead expenses, which is, uh, you know, transfer from expense to inventory. Okay, but uh, the production loss of this quarter will also have some impact or element of, uh, you know, reduced uh, revenue in upcoming quarter in FOQ. That that will be the right assessment. The pain will continue for another quarter. Uh, seems so. It it all depends on how you know how soon can we make it more efficient to to produce more. And uh, happen yeah, in so. Quarter, right? Correct, correct. So the pain will continue, but you know how much we can reduce. That's what we have to see. At least the one-off items will be gone, and maybe if we can increase certain uh, inventory levels, then uh, at least we will get it to a positive uh, EBITDA. Okay, got it. And 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 in the India business, uh, obviously the revenue generator US, uh, uh, you know, revenue is coming back pretty uh, pretty decently, uh, and that is also helping us to improve our margin profile. Uh, you mentioned on the comment that the growth will sustain uh, uh, given the current outlook or what we are seeing right now. Um, does that, uh, does it also have an element, you know, to further improve uh, uh, our gross margin profile? It has uh, given the uh, scale is coming back, and uh, we will have some operating leverage, uh, which we were uh, the leverage which we faced uh, in the past year, uh, will start to recoup uh, again. Uh, once the scale scale up, uh, you know, uh, scale up happens uh, quicker than um, than the previous quarters. Correct. So once the volume start increasing, you know, that's what we're seeing from last few quarters. So we started selling more units, and absorption is more. So your margin is improving. So you know, the idea is one is of how to reduce costs, mm -hmm. and uh, how to improve in, uh, improve profitability by making more volumes. You know, that's been the uh, that's where we are putting more efforts on. With Senexi, you know, the, the issue of revenue is not there. Now the whole focus is on how to reduce costs and uh, be more competitive and also increase the margins. And lastly, on the CapEx outlook for this year and next, um, uh, especially for the Senexi part, would be helpful. Okay, so Senexi, uh, we are currently uh, framing the uh, CapEx plan for uh, this year and next year. And overall, uh, the allocation would be around 30 million euro, mm -hmm. uh, both for uh, changing the uh, equipment as well as increasing the capacity level. And for uh, Glan Pharma, uh, the usual uh, the programs which we are running for increasing capacity like Suite 9 and uh, Combiline and Pashmalaram, we are increasing backline. So all put together, we expect to spend about 300 crores in the next financial year. Okay. I'll jump back in. Thank you for the response. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Ankush from Access Securities. Please go ahead. So, thanks to uh, offering the opportunity, sir. So, my question is running to the key products like uh, uh, Carolactic and this uh, uh, Anastra brain. Uh, we are seeing the continuous fall in the prices. And uh, the kind of so what is the impact that we can see on the margin side uh, due to the key products because uh, because excluding Senex, the margins are quite good in this quarter for the business. 
So the uh, both the products, the uh, not just the pricing, actually the material, uh, the cost, uh, the raw material costs uh, have gone down substantially. That's got translated into end market pricing. So that pricing got adjusted. So from margin perspective, they don't impact. It's just that from uh, top line, it has uh, come down in terms of that. So there's not there's no issue with that. And Kitralag, it's been a consistent uh, product with the same similar pricing for uh, for a long time for us. Okay. So second one is the related to the Synaxi. So in the first quarter, we have a 10% of the margins. Any outlooks are for the sustainable margin for the Synaxi? So as we mentioned that uh, the near term would be uh, some challenges in terms of uh, uh, beta margin and we expect to break even uh, in uh, next 12 to 15 months. After that we will go back. This is the uh, last one is related to the uh, India business. India business is sustained. I mean it's a stable business now. So the kind of growth we can look in the India business. So could, could you repeat that? So Indian business is uh, almost stable if you, if you see on Q1, Q basis. So the kind of growth we can uh, look in the India business in upcoming quarters? So India, uh, honestly, we are in the hospital sales and most of the products what they have is under TPCO. So it's not, be, it's not been a big focus market for us unlike branded uh, products, right? So, you know, we are uh, selling which are um, I would say less competitive, but most of the injectables seen in India are under DPCO, so the focus is less and the percentage of revenue and compared to the total uh, uh, turnover for us is smaller. Thank you, sir. Back from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from DAM Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, so thanks for taking my question. So two questions. One is, A, in the past, you used to talk about our, uh, our plans to get into the biosimilars, biologics, manufacturing. Uh, any updates on how you're thinking about the space now after the vaccine uh, you know, opportunity didn't take off? Uh, still, we're actively pursuing that. It's not that it's uh, out of the window. I mean, we, we signed one plasma project, uh, and it's actively we are... Um, uh, started looking some revenue. Uh, we are estimating about 14-15 crores per year. This is this project for five-year contract. Uh, but there are also other uh, bio biologics companies we are visiting. But as you know, the funding for a lot of small bios have slowed down. Uh, so the, because of that, uh, it kind of slowed down. But we are still pursuing that space as well. Okay. And so secondly, uh, you know, when you look at your uh, business X of Synexy, uh, you know, uh, there is obviously U.S. has been uh, has come back pretty strongly over the last couple of quarters. Other segments seem to have their own set of stru struggles for now. When you sir look at take a three five year view of your business, uh, so what is the uh, you know the steady steady rate at which this business can really grow at? Is it more like a mid teens growth business, a late teens growth business when things stabilize, or what kind of growth characteristic would you sort of be comfortable looking at uh, for a three to five year view of, of our X and X business? Uh, the good thing is a lot of complex products filings are happening and uh, while we have already filed seven, we have few approvals, uh, we're going to file four more this year. So that, uh, that those product launches will happen. And uh, we, are, we are also seeing uh, increase in the CDM space where a lot of companies are transferring products to us. So if you see the CMO, the CMO revenue is also going up. So there's a shift in that. So overall basis, uh, you know, and also you have to consider the base at which you're operating now. So, of course, as a company, you know, uh, on a consolidated basis, we have to see. But at least XNXC basis, uh, probably, um, uh, teams could be a target internally, but, uh, you know, we have to see, you know, where they're going slow on how we are devalued, uh, because there are several options we are looking at. But that's, that's what we're looking at, at least in the next, uh, two, two to three years. And sir, over this period when you talk about mid-teens target for, uh, you know, for the business, this would be what again driven by the US or or RW or what is what is going to be equally or equal, you see any particular geography is being the primary driver for this growth? See, there's a lot of opportunity in RW also, uh, like you said. Uh, so that growth will come from there. US complex genetics are there. 
uh, we have uh, entered contracts with uh, cartridges, uh, pen products, so that will add some revenues. And also, uh, we are looking at contract manufacturing from some of the big pharma as well. So it's a combination of uh, these few few things. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neha Manpuria from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Uh, just a clarification on the Synexi margins. Did I hear correctly that Synexi would continue to be loss making uh, for the next year also for fiscal 25 and um, the margin guidance that we had is only for FY26? Uh, not at EBITDA level. I think uh, uh, Ravi was mentioning at the PAT level because of the, uh, the depreciation and amortization. But EBITDA level will be positive. Okay, okay. So the 10% uh, uh, guidance that you gave for EBITDA, you know, is that number reasonable? I mean, is that margin reasonable to assume uh, in FI25? Yeah, I think FI25 that's reasonable, yes. Got it. Okay. And uh, Ravi, on the depreciation and amortization, uh, in your opening remarks, you gave a number of 90 to 140 million. Seems like a very wide range. So this is the number that you would see in Synexi for, uh, you know, uh, for Synexi as an incremental DNA. I mean, what's the DNA in a base that I should look at, you know, for the console business? Yeah. So uh, if you see uh, uh, Q2. Yeah. So the position was about uh, you know, 80 crores. Hmm. Okay. Now, going forward, there would be around 10 crores addition to that. So, 90 crores. Instead of this quarter, it is higher because you have made a catch up the position here because PPA was finalized this quarter. But a going forward basis, there would be around 90 crores on a console basis. Okay. So, 90 crore is the number I should look at. I, I, so I, okay. Got it. Uh, understood. That's clear. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chinpan Shed from Girik Capital. Please go ahead. Question got answered. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, if you wish to ask questions, you may press star and one now. As there are no further questions from the participants, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Ankit Gupta for closing comments. Thank you everyone for joining us today. We appreciate your participation. If there are some questions which are still unanswered, you can reach out to us anytime and we'll be happy to address the same. Looking forward to connect with you uh, the next quarter and also in case there are more questions. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Gland Pharma Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.